All right. What up, Saints? Um, I'm so excited to be bringing the word to you um, today. Um, just some things that the Lord's been really ministering to me about, um, and he really put it on my heart to share this with you all as well. So, um, yeah, let's just get straight into it. I'm going to open us up with prayer. Thank you, Jesus, so much, Lord, for your word and for the power of your word, Lord, um, that the truth, we, your word says, Lord, that we will know the truth and the truth sets us free. And right now, Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that this is the the content that you've given me, Lord. These are some keys and encouragement and just truth, Lord, that you've been sharing with me. And now I have the privilege of sharing it with the rest of your body, Lord, the rest of your um, sons and daughters. I just pray, Lord, and I ask you, Father, that you would help me to convey this, um, to convey your heart, Lord, to convey the truth um, in such a way, Lord, that all of your saints would just be able to be so encouraged, Lord, so inspired, um, so motivated, Lord, and just to know more of your mind and your heart for us, Lord. And in Jesus' name, I pray that you'd help me, Lord, to say what you want to say and um, that every saint, every soul, Lord, that's uh, hearing this word, Lord, would just be so blessed by you, Lord, uh, and by your Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Um, yeah, so the topic that um, I want to be sharing, uh, that I'm going to be sharing with you tonight is actually about man-pleasing, um, the fear of man um, yeah, and I, I feel like it's been something I've been working on the Lord with for some time now. Um, I've been, I definitely have been like really bound in this and I know there's, it's, it's like so broad and there's so many, I guess it's like, you know, it's pride. There's so many different ways it can manifest in, in different for different people or whatever, but just, it's just a few things that the Lord's been, uh, just really encouraging me with and sharing with me. And I have just been experiencing, so much breakthrough and um, uh, new levels of freedom and confidence and boldness. And I know that's what he wants. God wants for all of his sons and daughters not to be bound by anything, whether it's people pleasing, anything, any sort of addiction, habit, mindset that's not from the word of God, that's not from his mind or his heart. He wants us living in freedom. Um, you know, like how you know we've been hearing recently, he created the whole Garden of Eden. And there's just that one dumb tree that we don't touch, but the rest of it, um, is ours to explore and um, ours to conquer and ours to just um, walk in with God and to enjoy. He's given us, um, he came to give us life and life in abundance. Um, so yeah, I know that's that's his heart for us and that's what I am experiencing more and more in my life and some things I want to share with you as well. So our first scripture um, is Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25. Uh, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25, it reads, The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever puts his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Uh, I, for one, can definitely testify that um, the fear of man bring, brings a terrible, terrible snare. And what that word means just basically is it's tra it's a trap, a cage. Um, when I looked it up on Esword, it meant like a noose for catching animals or like a hook for the nose. Um, just to keep you bound, keep you chained. Um, and that's what the fear of man brings into your life. When you are um, when you fear what other people think of you, might think of you, what they might say about you, um, what they might do to you or maybe to your reputation or something. Um, this fear, the fear of man, as does every fear, um, it binds. It completely binds you. It restricts you in so many ways, like in every way, really. Um, I was just writing down a few things for me that I've experienced. Um, and I feel like you're like a slave with a chain around your neck. And, and that fear, the fear of man determines, um, I've written down like which words you speak to which people, how you say those words, when you say those words, um, the things you do uh, or don't do, how you do them, when you do them the clothes you wear or can't wear, the job or career you work or can't work, uh, the dreams and aspirations you have or don't have, the car you drive or don't drive or can't drive, um, the people you hang out with or don't hang out with when you hang out with them, um, the weather, like literally. Um, I remember working at Pack and Save as a checkout operator and obviously had my, you know, working with people um, and my opinion would literally change with every customer. It's ridiculous, but that's how bound I was. And it's only like 
I didn't really realize it, but now looking back, I'm like, oh my goodness. So one customer would come in, um, you know, glorifying the sunny weather outside and the next one would come in complaining and then the next one would be enjoying it. And my opinion would literally change with each customer. So depending on what, what they were saying, I'd be agreeing with them. And I guess, yeah, it's not, not a problem to be, um, you know, hear other people's opinion or whatever. But for me, I was literally like, it was just ridiculous because I was like, oh, yeah, no, it's so beautiful. And then the next one, oh, yeah, no, it's terrible, isn't it? It's just, oh, yeah. So I was literally changing <laughs> person, opinion with each customer. And it's a ridiculously embarrassing example. But, yes, that's how bound I was. Um, the fear of man just keeps you caged. Uh, you're bound to please them. And you can never just be you, be yourself. Or doing what you want to do, absolutely not, because that, that would be putting other people out. Um, I, I was also another embarrassing example, like even being in the supermarket, you know, going in to grab my things or whatever, but I just felt like I was always in other people's way and always, you know, have to put everyone else first. Um, and if I'm doing anything for myself, it's putting other people out. Um, yeah. And being the real raw me, definitely not because, um, the real raw me, uh, you have that fear that people will reject you if they knew or saw the real you, um, where you're actually at, what you're actually going through, what you actually like or don't like, what you're passionate about or and not so passionate about, <laughs> um, all of that, like the real raw you, you're so scared of showing that because you're afraid of rejection. And so you change yourself, you conform yourself, compromise yourself or compromise on your standards. And when I looked up just like a basic definition of the word compromise, it means to expediently accept standards that are lower than desirable. And expediently, expediently um, just means like convenient or practical, although possibly improper or immoral. So it might be convenient to your flesh um, to accept this, low, this standard that's lower than desirable, to compromise on your standards. But yeah, you compromise, filter, edit, or completely omit the truth, um, the truth of who you are who you actually are, what you stand for, what you believe in, uh, where you're at in life, uh, your walk with God, your discipleship, or even just the truth of the gospel. Like um, we're going to look at an example later where people, because of the fear of man, they valued man's opinion above God's opinion of them. Um, They stayed silent about the gospel and what they knew to be the truth. When you fear man, you are totally trapped. You're bound. You're afraid of what people might think of you or what they might do to you or say about you so you compromise yourself and your standards and you walk throughout your life ever tentative and cautious not to offend upset displease disappoint disgust anyone or everyone and everyone and um you're ever striving rather to impress to make happy to please and to gain the approval of all those around you by carefully filtering and editing your words actions personality your opinion as i shared before of the weather (laughs) um Literally, you just, you're so bound by fear Uh, and and, and it just infiltrates and infects every part of your life that in every part of your life, you're so bound. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, To you also, when you're a people pleaser, you're bound by the fear of man. Everything is a competition. So you never stop comparing because you have to be the best. Um, Yeah, you have to be the best. You always need to be. I I loved, um, beautiful Val, they actually shared this recently as well. But, and I was like, that is so true. But when you're, when you're a man pleaser and you're so wrapped up in what other people think about you, that's where you get, you base your value and your identity in that and other people, which is, yeah, we'll get into it. It's really ridiculous, but it's true. Um, you have to always be perfectly understood um, because you're living before man and what they think of you or see or perceive of you that's literally like life or death to you and so you constantly feel the need to justify and explain um just to make sure everyone gets the right picture and that they're not seeing you in a bad light or I don't know yeah (laughs) Uh, it's so true but you you just have to be understood by everyone you have to be accepted by everyone everyone has to approve of you of what you're doing um just who you are as a person really Um, When you're a man pleaser, you're terrified of making mistakes and even more terrified of getting corrected because if you're corrected to you, it means you're the mistake. You're messed up. You're a problem. Um, Yeah, you're so scared of making mistakes because you're so um, wanting to be this something, to be this 
thing, superhuman really, um, that yeah, to make a mistake means you're you're disappointing yourself really. You're you're falling short of the expectations you're putting on yourself, uh, and then people just reflect that. Uh, as we've as we've learned, um, being a man pleaser, being a man pleaser um, means instead of being free, completely free to be yourself, the real, raw, unfiltered truth of who you are, wherever you're at at the time, you have to be, instead, you have to be who they want you to be or expect you to be. And as I mentioned, probably due to the expectations you've created for yourself that they, they now hold you to. Um, I think uh, Dad was even just sharing in his um, Light of the World series about how we can have this just twisted idea of what's loving um, and think that that's being a, like to be loving and godly and holy and righteous is to be a doormat. Um, yeah, no, it's not, <laughs> but we can think that. And so then we, um, think we're aspiring to be this perfect angel of a Christian who like never gets angry and they never speak up for themselves. And they're always just this loving, adorable, um, good Christian person. Um, but really that's actually not loving. And that's actually, we're actually going to find out that fearing man, man pleasing is actually, so selfish it's so selfish to the lord well yeah we're being selfish against the lord and against people um those that we love we think that we're loving them by letting them do whatever their flesh wants by just keeping silent by being a doormat um and, and seeking to please their flesh it's actually as you're probably already seeing it's not loving at all to ourselves to god to others um yeah and instead of being free to do to do whatever is burning in your heart to do with and for God, being a man pleaser, you have to check in with whatever they want you to do, whatever they expect of you nowadays, whatever they want from you, what will make them feel happy and feel good and comfortable, um, potentially with their sin or whatever. You just, um, it doesn't matter what your heart's burning, the spirit of God is burning to do inside of you. You you put that down and you esteem others, um, their um, opinion and their approval uh, and that's what you're, you're so afraid of losing that, that you just, yeah, you, you just check in with what they want, what everyone else expects of you, and you go and run and do that. Uh, instead of being free to say what's on your heart, to speak the truth, to be honest and real and open, vulnerable, uh, instead you have to carefully filter your words so as not to offend, uh, to keep this reputation, um, to, yeah, Keep this perfect little image of yourself um, because no one can know the real you um, and you can't speak the truth because you're too afraid of confrontation to ruffle any feathers. You're afraid of people um, getting upset, being in a bad mood, so you just don't say anything. Um, yeah, the fear of man, you're, you're, when you're in the fear of man, you're bound to this, to project this curated version of yourself that they will accept, the world will accept, people will accept, people will, will admire, people will approve of. And I hope you'll be beginning to see it. This is just like a few things that are on the top of my head that I know I've um, experienced um, in being bound to the fear of man, but I hope you're really seeing how much of a, like how binding this is. That's just the perfect word. It's just bondage. Um, it's a snare, what the fear of man brings. Um, I know I've been bound by this fear for a while, there is absolutely no freedom in the fear of man when you're living to please man. You're so caught up in that. Um, for man's approval, you live in fear. Insecurity is your closest companion and you're totally, totally bound. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick stop and start and then we'll keep going.